Uh, I'll start talking about internet protocols, uh, a little bit more of the detail about internet protocols that we haven't been looking at so far. So uh, internet protocols, uh, I need to describe to you what uh, an internet protocol is and a little bit about uh, the different types of protocols that are used in the internet, uh, what the structure of the messages. The, we've been glossing over this. We haven't covered this information yet because we've been talking about using the Raspberry Pi, uh, connecting it to the internet, but from a user's perspective, you know, uh, as if it were a de 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 uh, desktop or laptop, or something like that, and I'm sitting at the machine, I use a browser or something like that, or I connect to it and type commands, but from a user perspective. But once we start writing code and the code has to actually connect to the internet, then we need to understand a little bit more in detail about how these connections are being made and how these messages are being made. So that's why we're going to start talking about some of the features of, of internet protocols, of the protocols that define the internet and how they work. Okay, so uh, key feature, unique naming. So every machine that's on the internet has to have a unique name. And uh, these protocols have to define the name, right? They have to specify a name for every comp everything on the, uh, on the internet. So every node gets a unique host address. Every host gets a host address. Now we call this an IP address, okay? But every node uh, it, the, on the internet has to have its unique address. Now this is modulo uh, NAT mappings, but we'll talk about that later. So generally everything gets a unique address. Uh, also, a message. So these messages that are sent on uh, the internet, they have a structure. And these structures, you know, the code that you write is going to have to create these messages. So you have to know a little bit about the structure. Uh, the internet protocols define the structure, the standard structure of these messages. Now, if you look at any one of these messages that goes across the internet, you can, uh, you can generically, no matter what protocol you're talking about, you can generically cut it up into a header and a payload. The header has protocol-related information. Okay, where the payload is the actual data that you want to send. So you want to send data, say I want to send the words hello world to somebody, right? You don't just put hello worlds on the, on, the, on the wires, right? You put that on the wire, that's the payload, but before that you have to put some header information, some information that the protocol needs to get that message to where it's going to go. For instance, you might put the destination address in the header, right? You might put the MIME type, or you know, what type, uh, yeah, this is text, or this is doc file, or something like that. You might put information about the text, the size of the message. You, there's a lot of data that you might put in the header before you, uh, you know, that you add on to the message, right? So the payload is the actual data that you want to send, but the header is this information that's required by the protocol uh, in order to get the message where it's going to go and get it there efficiently. So IP internet protocol family. So there's a, internet is defined really by a, a set of protocols, really pretty much three protocols. So first there's the IP protocol, internet protocol. That, uh, it does a lot of things, and we're not going into great detail about these protocols, but you need to know something about these protocols. IP protocol defines the naming scheme, okay? So the IP protocol defines the IP address, right? That's where the IP address, every host, every machine that's on the network has its own IP address. And so IP protocol deals with host-to-host -host connections. So a machine to another machine, the two hosts that are on the network, the communication between those two machines is dealt with is, uh, by the IP protocol. And all the information that you need to connect between two different machines is going to be uh, contained in the IP protocol head part of the header. And it's unreliable communication. So IP in general is unreliable. What that means is when you send a message to another from one host to another, you are not guaranteed that that message will arrive. Not if you just use IP protocol alone. If you were to just use that alone, you would not be guaranteed that it would arrive. It might fail for many number of reasons. Maybe it reaches a host. like a, So when these messages travel, they travel from one machine to the next to the next until they get to their destination. Maybe it reaches a machine and that machine drops it for some reason. That machine has a bug. You know? Maybe the machine crashes and it disappears. Right? Things like this can happen. So for one reason or another, the message might not uh, get to the destination. And that's OK with IP. If you look at IP, internet protocol, IP protocol, it, that's, that happens every once in a while. So, uh, so IP alone is an unreliable protocol. Now, on top of IP, in addition to IP, you're going to use either UDP or TCP. We'll end up using TCP, but let's define these two. UDP stands for Unreliable Datagram Protocol. It is process-to-process -process communications. So what that is, is if you remember that IP, what I'm uh, listed up here, IP is host-to-host, machine-to-machine. 
But remember that every particular machine can have many processes running on it. Maybe on one machine I'm running, you know, I'm running a web browser and I'm also running World of Warcraft. Okay? So those are two processes both communicating on the network. So uh, my World of Warcraft to World of Warcraft communication is different than my web browser to web server communication. Right? So UDP, it's datagram protocol, it is working at the pro process to process. So that's going to allow you know, uh, the web browser to communicate with the web server on the two different machines. And that's going to allow World of Warcraft uh, client to communicate with World of Warcraft server on two different machines. So IP is handling host to host, machine to machine, but a UDP is refining that and allowing you to communicate process to process on those two different machines. So in order to do that, these processes have to have names associated with them. These networked processes, they have to have unique names as well. These are called ports and we'll talk about those later. So a process naming, at this level, at the UDP level, there's a naming for each process, uh, the, each process on the network. And uh, it's also unreliable. So just like IP was unreliable, UDP is also unreliable. You send a message from one process to another, it might not get there. Uh, and that's okay with UDP. Now the other uh, protocol that you can use instead of UDP is TCP, Transmission Co uh, Control Protocol. TCP is also process to process communication, just like UDP. And it also uses the same type of process naming, but it's reliable communication. So what that means is if it sends a message, if you send a message from one process to another on a different machine, uh, that message is guaranteed to arrive at the destination. Now how does it guarantee this? Basically by retry. So it'll send a message and it'll wait for a response. If it doesn't get the response, it assumes the message didn't arrive, so it'll try again and try again and so on. So that's built into the TCP protocol. So TCP, it's a more complicated protocol than UDP. UDP is very cheap because uh, it doesn't have to handle retries and things like this. TCP protocol, it has to deal with, uh, has to handle that, you know, wait for the rec reply and all this. It's a more complicated protocol, but it gives you better guarantees. It's reliable communication. So TCP is generally what we'll be using. So generally, the, you, you, we'll be using TCP together with IP. Uh, you can use UDP with IP or TCP with IP, and either way, that's internet. Okay. Uh, but you notice that you have to use IP with either TCP or UDP, right? IP has to be used because the hosts have to have their own unique naming, IP addresses. And then TCP or UDP have to be used so that the processes each get their own uh, different names as well. So it's TCP and IDP is really the pair uh, that we'll be using. You can also use UDP and IP, but that's not what we'll probably work with. Uh, so TCP versus UDP, just to summarize the difference between the two. They're called transport layer protocols. Uh, they, we won't, they deal with process to process communication. That's basically what it means. Uh, it's connect, TCP is connection oriented, so it's reliable. You, when you make a connection between two different processes, that connection exists over a period of time. It's not just a one-off. It assumes that it exists for a while. Packet sequencing is supported. So it assumes you're sending many messages from one process to another. So it sequences the package, it basically numbers them. So that at the receiving end, you know what order the packets were sent in. Okay? And that's important for a lot of applications. The order in which the packets are received uh, may matter. Also, TCP handles flow control, error detection, other things like this. Error detection correction, so if there's a bit that's flipped, maybe there's some kind of electromagnetic noise and messes up a bit, that's checked at the receiving end uh, using a checksum or something like that. And flow control, so it can reroute, data, reroute packages uh, to avoid heavy flow, heavy congestion in the network, things like this. Now UDP is connectionless. UDP, it assumes it's a one-off. This one packet that you're sending is just one and you don't intend to send any other, or not anytime soon anyway. So there's not some long-lasting connection that exists when you're doing UDP. It's unreliable. It does not guarantee packet arrival. It doesn't do packet sequencing. Uh, so packets arrive and you know, the order that you sent them in might be different than the order they were received in, which is also true with TCP. But UDP doesn't attempt to label them so that you can figure out the order. So at the receiving end, you have no idea what order the packets were sent in. You just know, I got a bunch of packets, so, which is fine in a lot of cases, as long as you don't care about the order. Uh, UDP is simpler and faster than TCP because it doesn't have to handle retries and flow control and all this and error detection correction, all that. So uh, that's a comparison between the two. And we're generally going to stick with TCP, TCP together with IP. Thank you. Thank <music> you.